Well, today we're celebrating the 10th birthday of Shout Radio, and we've got a mystery guest on the line with us who was there from the very beginning, but has since vanished into the great unknown, like a missing sock in the laundry. (laughs) The mystery guest is the one and only legendary radio presenter extraordinaire, Jim Douglas. Good afternoon, Jim. Uh, Good afternoon, Toby. And happy birthday to Shout Radio, yes. Yes, we're 10, so we have to be mature now. Oh, we are mature, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Now, rumour has it you've been living in a secret underground bunker surviving on nothing but tins of beans. Can you confirm or deny that? I can confirm that as well as deny it. (laughs) 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 Now, of course you were actually there 10 years ago at the very beginning of Shout Radio. So Correct. Take us back to those early days. What was it like? Oh, it was uh, exciting and interesting to uh, get uh, the station on the air at that point, yes. Back in, what was it, two, ten years ago now, yeah. What was so exciting about it? Meeting and introducing uh, different presenters of that time. Yeah. And teaming up with uh, the wonderful Mr... The CEO, the CEO himself, Mr. Aaron Bennett, yes. Yes. What were the kind of events that led up to actually setting up the station? Because you two had known each other from various things like hospital radio before, hadn't yes. you? Yeah, that's right. I've been in hospital radio from uh, 1967. Wow. Yes. So what led up to setting up Shout Radio? It was a case of, um, well, Aaron was thinking, well, we were going to start a radio station here in the, the sunny seaside town of... Uh, uh, Blackpool, which was actually based in Cheshire at that point in time. Yeah. So Aaron thought, where can we uh, begin and where can we, uh, what can we name it? And we were racking our brains and uh, we came up with the idea of uh, the Lulu hit, Shout. Ah. And uh, that's what basically uh, kicked it off. Right, we'll have that as our uh, logo and our uh, station ID, basically. So that's where it came from. It came from Lulu. I never knew that. Mm, yeah, Shout Radio, Shout. Uh, Lulu and the Lovers back, what was it, 1964, 65-ish when that was issued? People have sometimes asked me where the name comes from and I've always said, I don't really know, maybe it just sounds good. And people sort of agree with that, that it does sound good. It stands out yeah. in a list of stations. You would spot it and go, ooh, what's that? Well, of course, Shout was not originally her song. It was done by the Isley Brothers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we thought Shout and uh, Lulu was really was shouting out. She had a powerful voice, did uh, Lulu at that uh, that time when she was doing her hit records. And were there any memorable on-air moments or events during the early days of Shout Radio that stood well, out to you? You're, now you're asking. Uh, <laughs> Aaron might have some memorable moments and bloopers and all this that and the other, you know, things that have gone wrong. Uh, of course, there was the birthdays every year. Yeah. Uh, Christmas and uh, this, that and the other, which went ahead, you know, the Christmas uh, days, the build up to that. When we were supposed to play Christmas hits and uh, we weren't supposed to do this, we weren't supposed to do that. You've got to be careful with what you sell on the air, you know, no, yes. no wearing words whatsoever, keeping it nice and tidy and clean. Well, you've always been the consummate professional, haven't you? <laughs> Well, since 1967, I did hospital radio for 40 odd years yeah. in Blackpool uh, on uh, Radio Victoria at that time. Well, we I met quite a few uh, celebs at that time. Ken Dodd opened it back in 1967, the late and wonderful Ken Dodd when he opened it. Um, I remember when he came down the stairs because we were living in well, we weren't living; we were uh, in what we called the catacombs of the hospital. And when he opened it up, he came down the steps and he was followed by a, a very um, nice roly-poly uh, uh, matron. And he turned around and said to her, oh, you look like a hovis on legs. <laughs> Which was very funny. Get had all the staff laughing in this and the other, you know. Yeah. We've, we've had um, celebs down there, like the late Violet Carson, if you remember Coronation Street and Ina Sharples. Uh, she came down, uh, Les, the late Les Dawson, of course. And many, many other people that came that came down that came down to the studio. Yeah, yeah. So, how did you actually get into radio originally? Oh, now, this is going back to 1966 when I have a friend of mine who I went to school with in Blackpool. Uh, this person now lives in Vancouver, in Canada. And uh, he and his late father uh, decided to open up a radio station in the hospital for the football, you know, Blackpool Football Club, for patients to listen into. 
So um, my friend Robert said to me, uh, do you want to help out and build this station, which we did do with a colleague from uh, an audio shop in Blackpool. And uh, we started off like that. So I was an original member of uh, Radio Victoria, though other people say that somebody else was and he wasn't. But uh, that's a different story completely. Uh, I've got photographs to prove it. And Rob, uh, Aaron's seen the photographs of me in my maroon, and, my, my, my maroon striped jacket <laughs> yeah. with a hammer in my hand, uh, pretending to uh, knock a wall down at uh, Radio Victoria in uh, Blackpool. And you mentioned like 1966 and 67. Yeah. And there was a whole lot of radio going on at that moment, wasn't there? There was pirate oh, yeah. radio. And then, in, of course, yeah. in 67, radios one and two who launched so mm. was all that stuff happening maybe an influence on you in some way oh yeah i used to i didn't used to listen to radio uh, the bbc light program as it was called then you know yes. uh <laughs> or radio one for that matter uh, i was basically listening to the uh, the only pirate station that we had up here which was radio caroline north and nicely to say that is still going uh, courtesy of the ross revenge down there of uh, the uh, blackwater estuary and just uh off the Thames there. Yeah. So that's that's relayed by Manx Radio, which is good. Every weekend you can tune in on Manx Radio or even on the net and the web uh, to Radio Caroline North again and re- relive those absolute superb memories. Since 1967, you must have seen so many changes in the industry. How have oh, you yeah. kept up with the latest technology? Because, of course, back in the day it was all records and today... You're going to be playing music off a computer. You'd only play it off a record if you were doing it simply for the novelty. Well, yes. I mean, when we started up in hospital radio, uh, all we had, as you say, was vinyl records, cassettes. Cassettes, now they were an absolute nightmare to cue a track up. Yeah. Uh, Because you couldn't, you had to know where the the tape was and uh, uh, where the music was on the tape. You know, you'd have to go through through every track unless you'd pre queued it up before you programmed. But if you wanted to say it was a compilation, uh, cassette that's even more terribly difficult to do yes as you can imagine then we have the reel to reel tapes with the uh, trails and jingles on uh when we did first start up um we didn't do the actual uh um reading out the record requests or whatever you know um we had two guys at a desk doing all that for you uh the presenter sat in a chair on the opposite side of the room and uh, they the guys at the desk gave out a signal when you could uh, actually s- uh, read the request out and that's it then it all changed it must have been in the 70s when somebody suggested oh why don't you do it yourself fair <laughs> enough we'd have a go and um hey presto it all went from there cassettes went out the window uh, the tapes we kept for a while we had records uh which we queued up uh, which was rather unusual if you've ever tried to queue up a, a 45 or an lp and um, get the actual uh, record to start precisely when you wanted it to start. <laughs> and if you uh, can imagine putting the stylus onto the record at the very beginning of the actual track, it was sort of wind up, if you know what I mean. Uh, that's what we would call, uh, uh, to coin a phrase, we coined a phrase called doing a Louise. <laughs> now, that was uh, brought into from Manx Radio because there was a lady on there called Louise Quirk. <laughs> lovely lady yeah. uh, to do programs and she always started it miles too soon with the vinyl track so what uh, we did we took it about a quarter of a turn back and started it from there and it started perfectly every time any other presenters who uh, did it wrong oh he's done a louise or she's done a louise <laughs> and thinking, who the heck is louise <laughs> and we had to explain who she was and what she did very very intriguing really but uh, as uh, time progressed, we had CDs. Uh, most of the presenters that we... Well, I mean, Radio Victoria closed was closed down back in 2011 uh, when we did our last show on there with Aaron, of course, and... Um, it was uh, words were said on the air that couldn't be said on the air anywhere else. Basically. <laughs> and we had our funny, funny times when we were cut off air. Yes. 
uh, and due to the engineering people uh, cutting our feed off and we didn't know about it. We were basically talking to ourselves and doing nothing, basically. Do you feel that you've adapted well to the digital change? I mean, when was the first time that you switched from the analogue methods of playing songs and jingles to digital and how did you find that? Oh, I found that um, quite easy, basically, because I've got roughly a, a good selection of albums and CDs, uh, probably about 17,000 uh, tracks or 17,000 CDs even, even at that point, which I all sold and we all transferred it to uh, computer, which made it a lot easier to uh, find the track and uh, just uh, stick it on the air, as you probably know as well. Yeah, you can just find any song in the world at your fingertips now, whereas more, before more or less. you had more to less. have a copy of it and it'd take ages yeah. to find it. Yeah, I mean, we're... Uh, you can probably hear a voice in the background, <laughs> Neil, by the way. Uh, we just say, well, if there's a bit of music that we're after, like uh, odd tracks. I think there was one track that um, I managed to find, um, which was called, uh, oh gosh, what was it called? Um, Frank Chasfield in his orchestra and uh, Have an Aguila. I think it was Have a No, it wasn't Have, a, Have an Aguila. And it was a track by him. It was used by one of the pirate radio DJs and nobody knew what it was called. <sighs> and somebody found it and uh, I'm still hunting for it on vinyl because it's quite uh, a rare bit of music and it's worth uh, quite a lot of music, actually. Uh, if you remember the vinyl tracks of the vinyl uh, records had big white labels on or in some cases with a le big letter A across the top. Now they are quite uh, rare and expensive to find. Yes. But some of them now you can find on, uh, dare I say, YouTube and you can uh, obtain it from there. Since you've been presenting on the radio, how did you develop your own on-air style and connect with your audience? I tended to, at uh, one point uh, in the early years, um, copy other presenters. Um, I mean, I had a friend who worked for Radio Caroline called Bob Stewart, who later became the uh, station manager for Radio Luxembourg. I got to know uh, another guy called uh, Daffy Don Allen, who was a uh, country music DJ from Canada who uh, worked worked on also Radio Caroline North doing the uh, uh, Saturday Country Music Jamboree, as he called it, you know. <laughs> um, we managed to trace him down on the Isle of Man. Um, he sadly passed away through uh, alcohol poisoning. Uh, years later, we managed to trace him down. I, got, I, I actually got a... a <laughs> scrounged a day off work to go over to the Isle of Man with a friend of mine and um, we managed to find him guess where in a pub <laughs> yes and uh, that was uh, a good day out and you mentioned a few influences there that you knew were there any influences on the proper radio stations if you like the big ones the celebrity presenters that you maybe took bits from maybe maybe not uh, nothing to do with the BBC sadly but uh, independent radio Oh, yeah, because I knew a gentleman who uh, uh, worked on a few radio stations. He's now a taxi driver. I think he might have retired by now. Uh, a gentleman called Pat Gibson, who uh, uh, used to work for Radio Lancashire. Then he worked for uh, Red Rose Radio. Then he went to, uh, that's Red Rose Radio in Preston, as it was. Uh, I actually applied for a job on there. Uh, did a, sent in a, a tape, demonstration tape, as you do. And I came second on that. But, um, yeah, <laughs> been around a few radio stations as well. Radio, uh, Red Rose Radio. Um, oh, whether I, we did jingles for um, Hospital Radio, and that was done at uh, Radio Wave in Blackpool with uh, a gentleman who now, if you're travelling around Blackpool on the buses and trams, you'll hear his uh, tones. He's called Andy Mitchell. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I know him quite well because he also did hospital radio as well. Yes. Yeah. Now, are there any plans for you to root back into radio? Because as far as I know, you haven't really done much for the last two years. No, I've had a what we call a little bit of a break. Yes. Um, there is a word, and I can I can never remember what Hiatus. it is. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a rather unusual word. The vascular, I think. The oh word yeah, that's it. That's like when you have a year out from like uni, isn't it? Yeah. It's a bad it's a word I'd never heard of until it took a couple of days ago and a friend of mine told me uh, what it was. I keep forgetting <laughs> it. <laughs> yes. I don't forget other things like uh, record labels and uh, artists, you know. Uh, could, I could probably tell you, if you gave me a uh, uh, an artist, say from the 60s and 70s, I could probably tell you what... Um, uh, the label was, and uh, maybe 
close enough for the year as well. Oh, well, you challenged me now. Who, <laughs> yeah, who should I give you somebody like really difficult? The Chilites have popped into my head for some reason. Uh, you've got the name wrong for a start. It's the Shylites. Oh, the Shylites. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, is, is it French or something? No, they're American, I believe. Oh. Yeah, the Shylites. Uh, have you seen her? Uh, probably on uh, ABC Records in America. Um, now the date, well, I'm going to say uh, the late 70s, probably with that one. Well, it says here they were on Brunswick well, Records yeah. and Mercury yeah. Records. Brunswick was uh, a spin-off of Decca Records uh-huh. in the UK. Nice. Well, just as we go, <laughs> is mm. there a particular song that's one of your favourites to play on the radio? Oh, now you are asking. <laughs> um, that is a very good question. What I can do is leave that completely in your hands because my uh, music memorabilia, um, get, I mean, I can go back to the very first record that, I'd, uh, or very first album I bought. This was The Shadows' Greatest Hits. Now, I've met most of the Shadows. Um, Hank Marvin, who now lives in New Zealand, um, he is a uh, guitarist. He's got a son and daughter. She sings, and his son also plays guitar as well. So uh, anything by the Shadows, foot tapper, um, or Apache, something like that, you know. Yeah, well, would do nicely. I'll stick something like that on. And many thanks for talking to us today. It's been great having you here and enjoy the birthday celebrations. I will do indeed there, Toby. And thanks for inviting me onto your show. And uh, keep up the good work yourself, as I know you've got plenty of uh, interviewees yes. and interviewers to uh, put onto your programme as well. 